Well, happy Friday, everyone. Corey Barker here with another tutorial. This time we're going to talk about motion graphics here inside Photoshop CS6. Now, in previous versions of Photoshop, the animation and video capabilities were only in the extended versions of Photoshop. Now, in CS6, you have these features in both standard and extended versions. So, if you have Photoshop CS6, you definitely can explore these techniques we're going to play with here in this video. So let's just do some simple text effects, uh, playing around with video clips and motion graphics. And I've started by creating this, or I didn't create this, it's actually a stock image, of this space background. It's got a lot of nebulous clouds and stars and things like that, and it's looking really cool. And it's a good start for our sci-fi title effect. Now I've got another video clip here. It's actually a stock video clip uh, found on Fotolia.com, and you'll notice it's a QuickTime movie file. I'm just going to go ahead and open this up directly inside Photoshop. This is another great thing about these video editing features is that you can open up these QuickTime movies and see here in the timeline. And if you don't have your timeline open, it's under Window Timeline right here. And you can just grab this playhead and move through. And you can see this is kind of a nebulous explosion in space, you know, and in, in these video clips, when you download them from stock sites, it actually has the clip itself, and then it has the mask. It's got an alpha mask video uh, that follows it, allowing you to use that to uh, mask out the graphic if you uh, so wanted to, if you were using a program like After Effects or something like that. But I'm actually going to use the mask version of this clip, not the actual color version. Though I am going to put a color effect on it, I want to be able to control that myself. So I'm actually going to position my cursor just before the burst of the mask, right there. So that's where I'm gonna put the playhead right there. And just go into the flyout menu here and choose split at playhead. Cuts the video clip, I'm gonna select that first segment and delete it. So now we just have this segment here. So now what I'm gonna do is up here in the layers panel, I'm just gonna go ahead and contain this in a smart object. So it'll, it will allow me to scale the object um, any way I want once I'm inside of the other file. So I'm just gonna go and Control or right click right on here and choose convert to smart object. And let's go ahead and take that and drag and drop it over into our working document here. So I can see it's on top of my space background and you can see it's exploding and doing its little thing there. Now I want to just see the explosion part. I don't need to see all this black background. So if we're familiar with our blend modes in Photoshop, we know that if we change it to screen, it will eliminate that background and then we can just see the white explosion on the space background. Now you can see when it gets to a certain point, it gets to the edge of the graphic. So we need to go ahead and scale this up so it goes to the edges of the document here. And then there we go. So now it just kind of explodes out and then out gases out there. And then that's just, it's kind of like the Big Bang. It's a Big Bang in space. How original. Okay. So we have our explosion. And like I said, I'm going to colorize it this time through the use of an adjustment layer. I'm just gonna to go to the adjustment layer menu here and choose hue saturation. And I just wanna isolate it to just this layer. So I'm gonna use a clipping group. Let's put my cursor between these layers, hold down the option key, click once, and then it just isolates my correction to this specific video layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and check on colorize. And here you can see it colorizes that nebulous cloud and I can choose different types of coloring. This is why I wanted to use the black and white version as opposed to the color version. Now I could have colorized the color version, but there's a lot more detail in the mask version with all the white and gray areas, so I can see that a little bit better. So I'm actually gonna make this kind of a dark blue there, and it's kind of close to the background there, but not too close there. I think that looks pretty good. So just take my playhead and play through, and we've got a cool explosion in space. All right, so now we're looking pretty good. So now it's ready to bring in our text. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my text tool, set a text layer, and let's just um, go ahead and set the title of our fake movie here. And we'll just call it Cormetheus. Yes, we are going to make a science fiction film called Cormetheus. Pretty cool. All right. Now, of course, it doesn't matter what your title can be. I'm just playing around with this, but this is what it's going to look like when it ends. So you can see as I play it through here, the explosion is right there in the middle of the text. That looks pretty good. Now, what I want to have happen is this text to sweep across the screen and just kind of leave it and right at the moment the explosion happens. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's actually close this panel here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and first go ahead and contain this text item in a smart object once again. So I'm going to right uh, click or control click right on it and choose convert to smart object. And then make a duplicate of that smart object layer. Just press command or control J. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the duplicate layer and let's go back and work on this layer below. This is the one we're actually going to animate. So right here in the timeline, you can see it corresponds to the layers here. So I'm going to twirl down this to reveal the properties. And you notice we have three different properties we can animate, transform, opacity, and style. All we're worried about in this case is the transform segment. Now before we do that, I want to have this have the appearance of a motion blur on it. Now, unlike uh, After Effects, where it actually has the motion blur feature built into the animation, Unfortunately, we do not have that here in Photoshop, so we have to kind of fake it. So I'm simply going to go to Filter, Blur, and choose Motion Blur. The angle I'm going to set to zero, so it's left to right, and distance at around 25 pixels. And that looks pretty good, so you can see it's getting a little bit of a motion blur there. So there we go. So now I want to animate this layer. So I'm going to go ahead in the timeline here and make sure that my playhead is at the very beginning of the timeline. Or rather, I don't. it's actually where you want the animation to start. I don't want it to start at the very beginning of the clip, but rather um, just a few frames in. So I'm actually going to move this to the one second mark. And then click on the stopwatch next to transform here, and that's going to establish a keyframe for that text. Now you can move these keyframes around, and, uh, which, which we'll do in just a moment. But I've established that keyframe, so I'm actually going to use the shift key, hold down shift, and drag this to the left until it's out of view completely. It's like that. And I'm going to move my playhead over a little bit so it, uh, a little bit of time passes to right about here. And you can, like I said, you can always adjust, it, adjust this later. But back up in here in the document, still in that same layer, I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag to the right until it goes off camera or out of view on the right side here. Now you'll notice what happened down here in the timeline. It automatically created a new keyframe because we've changed the positioning from here to here. Now if I drag my playhead through, you can see it goes through and looks pretty good. Now if I want to get an idea of how fast it's actually going, I can hit the space bar and hit play, and you can see it flies through there. It's pretty quick, but I think I want it to be a little bit faster. So I'm actually going to take this second playhead, or second keyframe here, and just nudge it closer to that other keyframe. The closer the keyframes are together, the faster the animation is going to be. So we'll just come back and, and play that again. And that's what, now it's, if it's, it's since if it tends to get a little jittery, and that's because it's rendering frames, and that's that green line up here. So just let it render the frames and then play it through again. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so it's speeding through pretty good. In fact, the speed it's going at, I would almost assume the motion blur would be a little more so. So let's actually go in there and increase the amount to something like 40. Whew. All right. And it's, it helps if you uh, add your own sound effects as you're working. You ready? Here we go. Whew. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, what I want to have happen is I don't want the explosion to happen until this point right about here when the text passes, and I want it to explode and leave the lettering there. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn on that original layer or that duplicate layer of the text that we created. Remember that? And I'm going to change the blend mode of this to difference. And you'll notice... It blends in that background, it looks really cool in there. But I don't want it to appear until after this segment passes by and the explosion starts. So let's say I wanted to have the text appear right about there. So I'll go over here into the timeline and this very top layer here, I'm just gonna go to the end of this, or the very beginning of this clip, grab it and then just slide it over and trim it until it gets to the, where the playhead is currently sitting. So now when I drag through, it's gonna whip through and appear, just like that. Once again, sound effects help. There we go. So that's looking pretty cool. So the timing of the sweep looks good. It reveals the text right there at the right moment. And the, but the explosion is out of sequence here. This explosion is obviously happening way too soon. I want the explosion to happen right about here, just before it reveals that text there. Now you can use your left and right arrows to kind of toggle through the frame step by step. So I want it to appear just before the text appears, right about there. Let's start there and see what happens. So I'm just going to go down here and select both of these layers. Remember, we've got the, the explosion layer and the adjustment layer that's colorizing it. So we need to select both of those and then just slide them over till their beginning is right where we want it to be, right about there. And so if we slide through, it's 
off a little bit, so I'm just going to slide it that way a little bit more. It's almost a little bit too soon. Let's just nudge it one more little area over there, and it's just. Then this is this is the thing about motion graphics. It's a lot of trial and error, especially in, especially in Photoshop, because you don't have all those capabilities you would have in After Effects. But in many ways, you don't need After Effects if you're doing some uh, rather interesting motion graphics. It's very simple animations like this. And notice we're combining video clips with animation we're creating here inside Photoshop. So let's just see what we've got here. I'm going to narrow the work area to where it's going to render and play through to uh, three seconds here. And let's hit the space bar. It's going to render through, show the explosion, and boom, we have that really cool text effect. How cool is this? Now, of course, I can expand it out here so it'll play through the full five seconds there. You can see the explosion dissipate out, and then the title is really, it's really kind of interacting in there, showing those particle effects through there, and that's really, really, really cool. Pretty neat. Now, that's pretty much it. It gives you a good idea of what you can do with some simple keyframe animations along with video clips here inside Photoshop CS6. Now, because we made those two text objects, smart objects, they are linked. So if I wanted to change the title, as cool as, Cor as Cormetheus is, and I'm really partial to that, I don't know why, but let's say I wanted to uh, change the title, then I could just simply go inside either one of these smart objects. I'm just going to go in here, and we'll just call it, and we'll call it Planet. We'll just call it Planet Cory, why not? And uh, so I've changed the text, closed the document, save the changes. That text item has changed, and also the one that sweeps through, notice it has changed as well. It's Planet Cory, it's blurred. All we do is just play through, and we've got our explosion, and our sci-fi title sequence is looking pretty sweet. So, again, experiment around with these features. You can play around with video clips, um, QuickTime movie files, and your own animations here inside Photoshop to create really, really almost Hollywood-style motion graphics in a matter of minutes.